What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Hardcore Survival Project Ozone 3 Expert and as promised we are going into my least favourite mod of this pack um, but it's got to be done, it's part of it. Now it's least favourite because I'm not used to it and I don't understand it or know it off the top of my head, not because it's rubbish, because it does have some really good... Um, skins and uh, visuals etc so it all starts from the boring machine which and that's boring as in you bore stone not boring as in it's not fun uh, which you do on bedrock now i do try the bedrock that is literally on our spawn you can see it's a level with our base turns out that is not an option i'm not going to bore you with that and there's a lot of bores mentioned in this sentence but but you basically need to get down to Y level 5 or below, I believe it is. Anywhere under Y level 5, the bore machine will work. Now, there are a few ways of doing that. Uh, but the only way I could think of was to basically <laughs> fall. Um, because it's a long way to go. Now, an angel block will allow us to stop, but of course, just an angel block will cause us to go splat. So instead, the options we are left with are water, which also works, and then an angel block, so you can float down. Um, but we do have some of the scrolls as well that stop us from taking damage every, I think it's one second or two seconds or something. So if we use that, we can fall, land goes splat, but it won't actually do us any damage, and we'll basically just get down, making sure that we take a crap ton of bricks so we can make our way back up, and ladders so we can actually climb up the bricks. Now, going through the tablet, which is the progression of this mod, um, I actually didn't before know that... I, I was expecting that these unlock themselves. They don't. You right-click on them, and then it takes you to the next thing, so... Quote unquote there, it's, um, yeah. Right click on the item and it ticks it, which takes you to the next item. And I'm just going through to remind myself of exactly what it is and what order I need to do things. Again, as I've mentioned, I am no expert with this mod. Though after this time, I think I've got it almost nailed. Um, in order to make the, the steps that I need to do. Of course, all of this is to get to the Dawnstone that you require for a few items. But then there is the crystal as well, glimmering crystal, that you have to make to unlock the Twilight Forest. When all of that's done, what I'm going to do is make a lot of Dawnstone, so I hopefully don't need to do it again. I can then rip down all of the buildings so I don't need to take up an area or a space with these things. Now we're going to just jump over to the death jump. And as I say, it's just falling and landing on this. Now there's no skill involved because the scroll stops you from taking that damage. Um, I've made sure I brought down a couple of stacks of cobblestone, uh, a couple of stacks of... Well, I don't need a couple of stacks, actually, because it's only about 60. So it's a stack, stack or so of cobblestone and a stack, sto stack or so of ladders. So I'm just building out a bit of a floor here. Now, I don't know if I'll ever need to come down here again or what it will be required. I'm not going to rip it up just in case. And all you need to do is put the machine down here. We are at Y level 4 now. Uh, so one under where we needed to go, but there was no way of, uh, well, th there was no way of knowing exactly where I was going to land. And there was, it was a massive risk because if I'd have gone past one, it would have been then zero and negatives and it would have killed me anyway. So I believe I pulled the trigger at nine. When I was falling, it was nine. And then obviously the block ended up being on Y level 4. So just pressing or clicking was five blocks I fell, which is quite insane. But there you go. We've got the boring machine down now. All we need to do is fuel it. And then we have the core that allows you to have an input and an output. As far as I'm aware, there's no way of actually using this machine without having that. Because it's got to have an input for the fuel. It's also got to have an output for the goods, right? So... The way I've done it is like so, then this pipe will be the output, of course it will need an item output thing and a, and a lever to make it work. And then you just put the coal or whatever you've got in the top hopper and that should power it up. 
Then I can leave it alone and come back and the chest should get filled. You can see there it's now running. And we need to make sure we power up the... Yes, that. So power that up. And there we go. So now, that's my excitement, because I really am not uh, great at this. So you saw me shaking there, which was my excitement of something actually working for a change. Uh, we now just need to give it time. And time is of the essence, but uh, it is what it is at the end of the day. That's how this mod works. And we're going to get three different things. You get them shards, the small ones. You get the crystals, and you get the dust. So now we can throw in a lot more coal. And let it do its thing. Now, I put them in and they're not... Oh, that's why. Because the the lever is turning off the hopper. So, I need a way of making the lever turn on the export pipe. But not affect the hopper. Now, instead, what I'm going to do is just let it drain out. As soon as that finishes, there's no longer anything in there. So, I can switch that and get all the results. Now, I'm not sure if that lost me a few, but it doesn't matter. So now that will go for whatever 47 coal pieces uh, ticks will allow. And then once we've got all of those items, then we can actually start looking at the, the mod itself. But until we've got a lot more of those, there's not really much further we can go. Because we need all of those different things to build the next items in the list. Uh, just put them away up now. So I'm leaving that alone and just building my way up. So a couple of blocks and then a couple of ladders, a couple of blocks, a couple of ladders. Holding shift all the time so I can't fall off because there's no way I can fall again. There is no scroll on me anymore. The timer ran out on that. I think it was only about two, three minutes or something. Um, and we've been down here a lot longer than that. So I'm just going to make my way up all, all the way into the top. And then we have a way of getting up and down that's reasonably safe. As long as I don't fall off the ladders, it shouldn't be a problem. With that finished, slept the night and then come back down. There is our first load of crystals, embers, etc. For the quest. Uh, levitation. I thought that was going to be like a slow fall. Because there wasn't a slow fall option. So I thought levitation is close to slow fall. It's not. It's uh, It makes the enemies around you float, levitate. Which is really annoying. Um, so I did waste some rack on unlocking that, but I have um, taken it off because I'm not interested. What I'm actually working for is magna magnetization and the next one hopefully will be the healing one, uh, regeneration. Just so that I know that even when I'm not needing to eat or I've got my apples that I've always got a decent tick of health always coming in. And uh, just as an added note, uh, or a caveat, there is... Yeah, you can see the levitation there, but it's it's, it's no good. Um, there is uh, passive mobs now on the, on the fields. I do have regeneration. I don't have the experience to use it. I've got 34, as you can see. It requires, I think, 67. But yeah, this is working now. So on this far end, we've got cows, pigs, and chuckens. No sheep yet, but they'll come. And that's the carrots growing, the, the carrots with a K. Uh, I would unlock them, you know, for the health benefits, the speed benefits, etc. Because they do come in handy. So now working at embers. Obviously, we know we need the machines to melt down the embers into the actual embers themselves. The, the, the flying fire that it looks like. And then for that flying fire, which is the embers, you need emitters and receivers that I've just built. They are to send and receive those embers to the various different machines. So we need a melter. Uh, the activator is the machine that is used to actually turn the crystals into embers. The melter is used to, of course, melt things down. Now, the rush here is that what we actually need to get up is all of these built so we can get all the way through until we can get the melters. You then use two melters, which create uh, molten copper and gold. Of course, that has to be done through the embers. Um, they then mix together and create Dawnstone. The Dawnstone then goes into what you've just seen me look at, which is the stamp. The stamp then with a ingot press 
makes a dawnstone ingot and that is the cycle of what there is there is then the next stage which is the uh, crystals that you can make from it now i don't remember what changed but it may be because the mod packs changed but they are slightly different in terms of the recipes than i certainly remember anyway but we still need to build all of these different various items so i'm going through and building one of everything we've got plenty of carmite because uh, I knew that this was going to be a thing, so I built plenty of Carmite before we started. Carmite bricks and Carmite plates, because that's what you need. They then turn into the blocks and the stairs uh, for various recipes, but I think we should have almost enough to do all of that anyway, so it's not a problem. Making some bouquets so that we can... Yeah, we need more Carmite bricks just to finish off this last item. Once these are all finished, we can then start setting it up, and it is likely to be very temporary. Now, the actual activator itself, you can increase its efficiency by building it on... You put it on a, I believe it's a copper block, and surround it by lava, and that makes it a lot more efficient. Because uh, what we're actually using to power everything is, is steam, right? You put water in, you put heat in, it creates steam. Then you put the crystals in, it creates the embers. But to make it more efficient, you have to... Uh, do that like it's a very very easy simple multi-blocks type building so as we set it up uh, i'm just getting the items together now now the numbers on it seem to be 1.5 times so you basically get a 50 percent increased efficiency by using the multi-block options uh, which of course needs to be on a block of copper and surrounded by lava now a block of copper is easy enough we've got plenty of copper and of course the lava is also reasonably simple because we have that we haven't got loads but we've got enough that we need uh, and we're using a mesh at block which is a block of blaze powder uh, which is 30 times anyway so if we do need lava we can get it pretty quick and of course with the pressure refinery on top of the copper block making a bit of a mess before this gets neat uh, i probably should have moved it in one block but again temporary just saying uh, but you do need to put nine buckets down no eight of course because the center one is the copper and effectively what this would mean is that that copper is going to get really hot right i mean well yeah very in fact it should melt but it's not going to and then on the side there is a hopper that is to put in the fuel which is the crystals when we're ready um then you then you add water and you're good to go so i've just capped that off to make it so they are going to fall down into the void and now normally that could cause lag but for this small amount it's not going to be an issue anyway and for the pc i'm using it's, it's not even going to notice it so again a temporary so so in here goes the fuel uh, which should start firing off there but of course it needs water as well because it uses steam it's a pressure refinery after all and the pressure comes from steam so to give it water the easiest way to do that i would say is not a sick it's a sink i've spelled that wrong uh is a sink is the i think one of the easiest things to build for infinite water sources and with that built we can now take it over sink's pretty simple just clay cooked up to terracotta whether it be blocks or bricks and then a bucket of water a pipe out of there or a fluid extractor pipe which can be powered that will then go into there, and there you go. So the crystals turn into heat, the water turns into steam, the pressurization makes it run, and you get 1.5 times in terms of embers that you would normally have. So you're 50% better off just with a bit of lava and water. Now we have the embers, and that's what that flame is. So at this point, we can now transmit that to the various different things depending of course on where we need them um, all of these need to be powered which is really an, it, it looks ugly um imo that's one of the reasons i don't like leaving them up because the levers make it look really ugly the receivers i don't believe need the levers but i wasn't sure and also you right click on the sender and shift right click where you want it to go i believe is the way you do it i couldn't figure that out which is why i'm struggling here but eventually i do work it out you can hear the difference in sound there the ting and then the dong so you do 
<laughs> I don't know why I do these random shakes when I'm excited with myself because I've actually figured something out. So yeah, you get the ting from the go to and the dong from the send and that is right click and then shift right click. And you can see there now the embers are flying from that refinery into the copper battery and that just stores some embers for us should we have more than we need. Uh, it then flies immediately out over to what is currently the melter. So the the one there on the, the the cream one on the right hand side, this one is the melter. The one to the next of it was the mixer. That is what we're going to use. But of course, to use that, we need two melters because you need to melt the copper and the gold separate, and then put them both separately into the mixer. That then creates the dawnstone on the top block. But it 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 takes me a while to figure that out as well. And then, of course, all you have to do is pipe that liquid dawnstone over to the stump, which is right there on the far left. The left-hand side of the screen there. And then you get your dawnstone ingots. And up until we need to do the glimmering crystal, which is the one where you have to use the ash and the pedestal and do that really... Um, I say complex. It's not really complex if you do... If, if you pick a number to start with. Meanwhile, the auto sifting is going wonderfully, as you can see. Just popped over here to get a few extra resources and get them automating into their cooked um, form, which would be ingots in most cases. Have to still turn them into chunks manually, but we will get around to automating that soon, I'm sure. Now, with two of the melters down, one on the left for copper or gold and the one on the right for the opposite, um, we are now getting closer to the outcome that we wanted to achieve for this episode, and that is Dawnstone. So you can see all of the items are pretty much powered. It's just a bow, and the thing that I never remember is where you power them. And it turns out the melters, you power them from the bottom, and the molten liquid appears at the top, I believe it is. You then put the molten liquid from the top of the melters into the bottom of the mixer, and the dawnstone comes out the top. It... it, it it took me a while to figure it out and I'm, I was forever obviously I wasted probably a lot of gold and copper in doing so luckily gold and copper isn't that critical to us we're okay with resources as I said because I put a lot of effort into it uh, at the beginning so that we wouldn't have to wait through it the idea of me doing these series and the way I'm doing it is that you get to hopefully flow through the process without getting stuck by the very, very monotonous um, expert pack parts, which is just lots of grindy, grindy sifting and smashing with a hammer, pretty much. Let me know if you do want to see anything like that. Obviously, I can do different variants of this. Uh, if I was to do a vanilla playthrough, of course, I'd leave everything in because that's part and partial of it in theory, but... For, for this, it's more about the mid to end game that I think is more a lot more exciting than the monotonous beginning. Now, this is obviously a lot more interesting for me, and I do love playing modded Minecraft Hardcore and especially Expert Packs, um, but my channel's not really got the following for Minecraft. So I'm putting it on because I'm playing it anyway. Um, but of course, there are other games that are the priority for the channel. However, at the time that I'm recording this, we are in the middle of a transition because I've just completed uh, Oxygen Not Included Season 3, I think it was. Uh, and I'm moving to Season 4 for the new download content, but I'm just waiting on a few things before I do so. So with a hopper on each to put in the required, I can put in a... Apparently copper on the right, gold on the left. Then piping those out. I'm trying to figure out now where. Now my pipes are set up for the top. And I th I'm pretty sure the liquid actually comes out of the bottom. So I have screwed up a little bit. It, it, it does tell you to a point. But it's also very discombobulating. As you can see there. The mixer in the middle has got molten. Two ingots of molten copper in it. Um, but the rest of it seems to have vanished. The gold doesn't seem to be showing anywhere. So that's probably why. But of course, reading the manual helps, and it clearly says there that you put the items into the bottom of the centrifuge. Each side, each side of the bottom of the centrifuge is its own liquid tank. If then you get a comparison in there that matches, which for us is going to be copper and gold, it then puts out the following into the top, which would, or should, 
be Dawnstone. So just briefly fixing that, but of course it is backed up now with the old metals. So what I'm going to have to do is grab some copper and gold again. Then I can just break the block to empty it and try that again and we should get Dawnstone. The center block should be the only one that needs to be destroyed just to empty those tanks. You can already see the right hand side there. I put copper in again. But it's just going into the top because I've obviously done it wrong. So I need to break that block and reset it. And breaking it and putting in the liquids again. Exactly the same as before, really. Um, copper on the right, gold on the left. Not that it matters which way around you do it as long as you put one of each into the bottom. And then obviously into the top of the mixer you then get molten dawn stone. Now, I'm clearly looking to try and do something specific here, but what that may be, I do not know, because I can't remember that, apparently. And more liquid pipes. Yes, more pipes. You can never have too many pipes, right? But basically, it's just to get that Dawnstone over to the stamper. Now, I'm pretty sure I have to take that out the top, not the bottom. Um, especially when I knew it was in the top in the first place. So yeah, you put the for the melters, you put the power, the embers into the bottom and the liquid comes out the top. The liquid then goes into the bottom face of the mixer. All four sides are different tanks. So either side is perfect for mixing two. The combination then comes out the top, which is the Dawnstone is going to come out the top just there. We then power that. And once we power the e liquid extractor pipe, that will then pump it over to the stamping machine. The stamping machine, of course just needs the ingot stamp in it and embers and there you go dawnstone congratulations and again shaking with excitement because this mod really does make my brain hurt so there we go that is dawnstone that is how you do it per se but uh, my description may have been a bit it wasn't quite as clear as a tutorial but i'm not saying it's a tutorial it's just what we needed to do. After that, we need to get into the shard things that you need to put in. But to be honest, they're just crafting recipes and then ash as well. So what I'm going to do is set up the ash table and get that melting or burning off. So you can burn anything into ash. Of course, I'm going to use cobble because it's the cheapest. Uh, and we'll get that so that we are ready to use it on the next episode and do something else on the next episode. But for this episode, we are at time. And effectively, the main part of the Embers mod is done. We now have Dawnstone and a lot of it. I'm hoping I will never need to bother again. I've just got smacked in the arse by a sheep, apparently. Because it's not a normal sheep. It is, in fact, yeah, half health. It's a demon sheep. And the little prick stain gets wrecked. YOLO. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please like any comments. Welcome as always. Don't forget to subscribe to see more. Take care. Goodbye.